I'm gonna ruin the retention of this video and say you need to go watch Scott's video right now because it is an excellent example of physical product design using 3D printing. Now that I fully flummoxed this video and we're not gonna get any views at all, I can get into the point that I'm actually gonna make. Scott U. John is a fantastic industrial designer. He's based up in Seattle. He has done some great work. Even if you don't like Apple products, you have to appreciate what he has done around creating these accessories for Apple products. He does a video very intermittently and they're always beautiful cinematography and beautiful product design. And I cannot say enough good things about the guy. He does great stuff, but he is most certainly an artist. And as an artist, he only has to worry about making one. I am an engineer, which means that I have to worry about making 10,000 of those things after he designs it and says, hey, I wanna make 10,000 of these things. So in this video, the engineer is gonna get his say, and we're gonna talk about how to actually optimize Scott's design so that it could be mass produced with printing if he wanted to put it in production. His videos get quite a few views. He should probably consider this just a little bit. But today we're gonna to talk about the iPhone DN40 dock. So this dock is just fantastic. Like I said, you should go watch his video, but this was a product that is meant to be a standby stand for iPhone because iPhone, when you put it into standby mode and it's charging, it goes into basically an alarm clock mode where you can get just basic notifications across the front screen. And this applies to a lot of other phones too. Scott loves the iPhone, that's okay. But the design of the stand is such that you're able to place the phone into it when you're going to bed, it mag safes onto the stand itself. And then in the morning, you just pop a little button on top and the phone pops out and you grab it. It is a beautiful piece of product design and one that I, I would love to talk about more in more context around industrial design because Scott doesn't really explain it very much outside of, ah, he wanted to do this. He did make it with overwork where they wanted to create something that was reminiscent of old bronze style design that's very simplistic based off of Dieter Rams and all the rest of this stuff. And the industrial design of it is great. It does a lot with very little. The function of it is fantastic. The experience and the ambiance of it is great. I can't gush too much about this because I really like this style of design. And this style of design is very enabled by 3D printing because they were able to print in two pieces something that would normally have to be assembled in five or six different pieces if it was made with traditional manufacturing. Having to sandwich together the top and the bottom and the place where the watch goes in and all the rest of that stuff, much of that is unmoldable as it is right now. But with printing, they could mass produce that product in a giant print farm like ours and not have to worry about the geometric constraints of it all. But there are some steps that they could have extended it further. The design of it as it is right now is okay. It is two separate pieces. You have the push out button, which is dropped into the top, and then you have the main body itself. Obviously, we're not printing the MagSafe chargers in any of this thing, so those would always have to be assembled down the line. But as to the design itself, it is designed to be printed up vertically with a little bit support underneath the ridge where the push button comes in. Now, if I was redesigning this product, I would try to find some way of printing it on its side or redesigning the push button to basically hang in the top slot so that it could be printed in place. This takes a lot more refinement and a lot more design optimization than they maybe had time to do. And you end up potentially with less crisp parts. The design of print in place features always relies on how well does a top layer fall onto a bottom layer and still have a smooth motion to it. It can actually be quite challenging and there's a lot of things to have to be done rather than simply modeling the part. But if they were mass producing this, while all the pieces could be fitted onto one bed, it is better if you can aggregate all the pieces into one single file and one single print. So if that push button could have been redesigned a little bit more in order to be printed as part of the main body, that would have been better. The other thing that I would recommend is that the design overall is perfectly set up to hide the fact that it's 3D printed. Many people don't like 3D printed layer lines and that's a little bit incorrect because layer lines are very much like grain in wood and many consumers really do not mind the layer lines. This is a stigma that exists mainly within the industry itself, not really within normal consumers themselves. 3D printing is not a bad process, it's simply different, but people consider it bad. That all being said, if you do not want the layer line texture, which Scott opted to go with in his video, you can actually apply something that's called fuzzy texture to the outside, which is effectively noise. This gives it kind of an orange peel kind of a look and can hide the layer lines very, very well. It's a low cost way of doing it, although it does increase print time quite a bit, 
And in a system like ours, if you were like uploading this to Etsy or Shopify to have us print and ship to the customer for you, this isn't really an option because it's natively inside of slicing itself. We're working on that, we'll get to it at a different time. But the other option you can do is actually to CAD in this texture itself. You can put all kinds of slots and wobbles and swirls or whatever else it was, or even project the orange peel onto the part. This makes your STL really large, but again, creates a texture that hides the layer lines in it. From a business model standpoint, this is a fantastic product because this is an item that adds value to an existing item that people are already fans of. And it also shows a deep understanding of that item. You've got an iPhone in standby mode. What is a really cool case that we could create for that iPhone? Well, this is a really cool case you could create for that iPhone. It could be created affordably and it adds a lot of value. There might be an addition where they can make to it to where after the phone is ejected, something to cover the front face of it because it's not very pretty when there's not an iPhone inside of it. But beyond that, it is a great object. And accessories are always great objects to go at because 3D printing is able to create new accessories very reliably. It's able to create tons of different variations. It's able to rapidly address a new item. So as the new iPhone comes out, you can redo the whole case and start printing them out. So it's a much more efficient way of making accessories than traditional manufacturing methods where you make a bajillion of them, ship them over here, store them and tell people buy a few of them and then you scrap them when a new phone or item comes out. Accessories can be made much more efficiently with 3D printing and still done at scale thanks to giant print farms like ours. And accessories tap into a niche, a group of people who really love that particular item and are looking for a particular accessory. The same thing applies to things like the Vision Pro, which are very specific and didn't have a stand for it to keep it from pressing its cushions down. This is another accessory that is very popular and has made a bunch of money for the people who created them. But ultimately, what I just wanted to do with this video was really talk about how great the design of Scott's item was. That iPhone dock is just a wonderful piece de resistance of how to create an object that is beautiful, reliable, and very functional for another object in your life. And it's all enabled by 3D printing. Its design is too complex to be made with traditional means, but it has an aesthetic that leans into what 3D printing can do. And if they ever wanted to sell these, there are now the resources available to mass produce these items with printing exactly to the amount of demand that the fan base demands. So this is a great example of a true product that could be created from this. And just an excellent demonstration of how to design for 3D D printing to create something that people can really love and connect with. And Scott has always been really good at this with all of his videos. Again, one last time, I recommend you go watch that video and several of his other ones. Even if you're not into 3D printing, the cinematography alone is a fantastic thing. Scott is a fantastic artist who knows how to make something within the limitations of what he has available. And 3D printing is a different way of making stuff. So now you can make different stuff. If you wanna check out other videos, we do a lot of these videos where we break down other designs. We've done Mark Rober. We've talked about real 3D printed products that are moving hundreds of thousands of pieces out there in the world through our real 3D printed product stories. And other than that, please like and subscribe. Have a great day, everybody.